OLM News continues our coverage of the global effects of hip-hop as we check in with Davey D as he speaks with Omar Fendom, Syrian-American hip-hop artist who with fellow MCs Amir Salaman, the Narcissist, singer Aya, and Ram Sayer's artist Freeway create a song that sparked a solidarity movement in support of the uprising in the Middle East. Let's check in with what they had to say. Right now, standing in front of me is one of the people who probably will go down in history if we go back into time, 10, 15, 20 years from now, we look at what took place during the January 25th movement. We're talking about the Egyptian uprising. Omar Afendo. I heard him say the revolution won't be televised. Al Jazeera proved him wrong. Twitter has him paralyzed. 80 million strong and ain't no longer gonna be terrorized. Organized, mobilized, focalized. On the side of you, Freeway, the narcissist, and a bunch of other folks. Yeah. Um, to, that's right. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the song. No doubt, yeah. So the song is called uh, Hashtag Jan25. It's obviously in reference to the fact that it was a trending topic on Twitter. And uh, the song is essentially a song of solidarity with the Egyptian people who were struggling. You know, in the uprisings, we put it out while it was taking place before Hasna Mubarak stepped down. Uh, it features, uh, just like David D mentioned, uh, the narcissist, a really great uh, Iraqi Canadian MC, one of my partners in rhyme, uh, Freeway. You know, an incredible uh, MC and contributor to hip hop culture. Uh, Amir Suleiman, uh, HBO deaf poet and just a phenomenal person, a phenomenal uh, spoken word artist. Uh, and Aya, a really amazing R&B singer from uh, from Canada, uh, who works with uh, Jazzy Jeff and the likes. And so uh, this was put together. Um, like I said, while it was happening, we were all in the different cities across North America, uh, recorded our verses uh, and put it out online. The video was essentially a, a, you know, a mashup of, of footage from Al Jazeera English, you know, and all the footage that we were watching while it was taking place. And um, like I said, it's a song of solidarity. I mean, I, 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 I humbly, uh, you know, I humbly understand how people are, are, are referring to it as a song of the revolution or one of the songs of the revolution, but really it's a song of solidarity. To me, the music of the revolution is the music that was being created in Egypt uh, and the voices of the people in Egypt and so, um, and Tunisia and now, you know, Syria and Yemen and Bahrain and so on. And so uh, it should just be understood within that context, I think. And uh, what was important about it, in my opinion, was the fact that it kind of opened it up to uh, a lot of people here in the United States who weren't really thinking about it, you know, who just thought they had nothing to do with what the events that were taking place there and seemed to either neglect the fact or just didn't even know the fact that billions of our tax dollars were being sent there. Charm awaits for no man. Your presidential charm and norm will break out of place in your own homeland. Now hip like Meza. Imagine a million human march to Gaza. From Kahira to Baghdad, Siyah said to him Sahira. Alamat al Akhira. You will see it. Well, for the people watching, what are some of the main grievances that the protesters in Syria have right now? It's a dictatorship, you know, it's a cult of personality, and there's a lot of corruption, there's a lot of greed, there's a lot of nepotism, there's a lot of bribery at the root of all of these problems. And, uh, and, and the people have, like I said, legitimate concerns that they want to see addressed. Um, you know, they, they, for the longest time, have had absolutely no opposition, that is, this, this current government. And, um, you know, when it comes to, to democracy, that, that just makes no sense. They want their voices to be heard, you know, and they see that happening across the Middle East, and they want, they want to be a part of that. My kids ain't eating, only up a difference is it's hot all year round there, when the time and your kids ain't freezing. Yeah. But we all starving, all grieving, and the people with the power ain't got hard enough to feed us. I follow the procedures and I study my Quran, this is modern day science. Jesus. And it's, it's a very tricky situation. And I've only really kind of come to the point where I'm comfortable just speaking out about it because I've seen how many people have died. And, uh, and I've realized that if people are willing to take bullets in the chest and the head for this, uh, you know, the least I can do is come out and speak. And I would hope that all the Syrians who are still on the fence about this, who haven't said anything, uh, could understand how, how, how grave the situation is now and to understand that we need to speak out. Um, if not for, for yourself and for your kids, for those who've, who've lost theirs. Yeah. My man Omar Offendum, he's in the building right now. We want to thank him for hanging out with us this afternoon. Peace, Peace for now. Won't be just niggas, won't be just spicks. A raps, packies, rednecks, and hits. Leaders ain't helping them feeding the kids. The leaders helping pigs eating the kids.